Technos Phantom V4 is so good, it's almost unbelievable. And it's a lot easier to understand what I mean if you've used previous Techno devices. This is not your average Techno phone or just a random foldable. Since I started using it, I've barely picked up my Galaxy Fold 4. Of course, it's not without its flaws, and we'll explore that in this video. As someone who has a soft spot for foldables or should I say productivity devices that are far from the conventional, when I first heard Techno was making a foldable, I was like, nah, they're not there yet. But then I went to MWC and had hands-on experience, which I made a video about some time ago. From that video, while I was impressed, I was still skeptical and would not arrive at a conclusion until I spent more time with it. Well, here we are with one I've been using for over three weeks now and so far, I've been left more impressed than I was at the initial hands-on because I've gotten to really play with the device and integrate it into my workflow. And certain features kept me stuck to it over my Fold 4, specifically the wider external display with a more conventional aspect ratio and the better crease on the main display, but we'll get into all that in detail later. Let me also just throw in that the software is so much better than you would expect from Techno. As I said earlier, I'm intrigued by foldables and the Phantom V Fold is not my first Fold experience. I currently have a Z Fold 4, an Oppo Find N2 Flip and a Microsoft Surface Duo. So I'd say when it comes to foldables, I've not only experienced different form factors but also have certain expectations. Now Techno dives into foldables with their Phantom V Fold and what better way to compete here than to try upsetting the competition in areas where it matters. First, it happens to be the cheapest tablet style foldable, significantly cheaper than say Samsung's Z Fold 4, coming in at about a thousand dollars. Now, more interesting is the fact that in Nigeria, it doesn't even cost up to a thousand dollars when you convert. The V Fold starts at 695,000 naira. For context, it costs way less than the S23 Plus, so you are getting a foldable option for almost half the price of Samsung's foldables, and it offers just as much in terms of power and arguably better size. Of course, in terms of overall functionality, it might not measure up to the Samsung Z Fold 4 for obvious reasons like Samsung being in the game much longer with better hardware, water resistance, S-Pen support, and near-perfect software experience. So let's take a look at it from an angle of what value it brings to the foldable category, especially for its price. First off, there is that premium packaging, giving you the unboxing experience worthy of a premium device. Offering its accessories, including a 45 watt charger and a case. And I think purchasing it right now gets you a free MTN 5G router and earbuds. Yeah, it doesn't come with a headphone jack and you really can't hold it against them. There's only two color options for the V Fold, black and white, which would have been my preferred color. Aside Samsung, Techno is the only other manufacturer offering a tablet style foldable with global availability. When you look at how this is priced and then its flagship specs, you are definitely asking what are the compromises, it definitely can't be that good. Well, there's a few which might not exactly be deal breaker. One of those compromises is the hinge technology here. You don't get that flex mode that allows you fold it at different angles. It's either you have it open in tablet mode or closed. Although there's a neat trick to have it in flex mode if you have the case on. The kickstand can get it to stay that way. Depending on your use case, that might not be a compromise. Personally, I've barely had use cases where I needed flex mode, even while I was using Samsung's Z Fold 4, unless when I needed to have the phone stand straight on a desk while I do something else. I'm sure there are people with better use cases for flex mode, so if you have the V Fold inside, just bear that in mind. Another compromise is the lack of IP rating, so no water or dust resistance. I wouldn't actually expect it for this price as a foldable, and especially since only Samsung actually has this on their foldables. The wear is made of recycled materials, feels like fabric and it's nice on the hands, similar texture as the Phantom X2 Pro. It's not glass, so that's one less breakable thing to worry about. The case that comes with it serves more as a kickstand than for protection because it only covers the wear, unlike Samsung casing which offers full protection. You have got Gorilla Glass Victors on that external display and the frame is aluminum. I'd say on the build quality, it's as premium as it can get. It feels really nice on the hands and the curve to the right edge of the display has a nice feel when using gesture navigation. Now, like most other foldables, it has a side-mounted fingerprint scanner, which works great. 
It's also got stereo speakers which are loud and sound good. The Phantom V-Fold has been built in such a way that it seems as though it's targeted areas where people have complained it's lacking in some foldables. Its squeeze is way less and barely noticeable and not as deep as what you have on Samsung. It folds flat with no gap in between. It's bigger than a Z Fold 4 but not as heavy as you'd expect and the weight is well balanced with the design. Its external display is wider and provides a more conventional aspect ratio such that your regular apps are not cut off on the side or looking awkward when using that external display. Using Samsung's Fold 4 as a point of reference, whenever I needed to use apps like Instagram or any app that isn't well optimized for tablet view, I had to pick up my S23 Ultra or any other regular phone close by because it looks too narrow on the Z Fold. But with the Phantom, I've never needed to do that as it gives me the right aspect ratio. This is a lot easier to understand if you've used foldables. Still on its display, there are really no compromises here. Both the external and internal display have 120Hz LTPO AMOLED. From my test, it can go as low as 10Hz on the refresh rate when the display is idle. Both can go up to 1100 nits peak brightness. The external display is 6.4 inches and is curved on the right side. The internal flexible display has a less visible crease as we've already established. It uses a display panel made by Samsung. Techno added a whole punch selfie camera to the top right, which I'd say will be more functional for video calls. So that's two selfie cameras, one on the internal display and another on the external display. But we'll get to the camera section later. The internal display is 7.85 inches with 88% screen to body ratio. It's a display with 2K resolution, which looks great. And you are able to tweak the color profile for both displays from the settings. I actually didn't expect transition from the internal to the external display and vice versa to be as seamless. So I say Techno impressed me on here. One thing I'm nitpicking though is not being able to customize my home screen differently for each display like I can on my Samsung Fold. But that's not a deal breaker. The wide display unfolded gives enough room to run to apps side by side with no compromises. I didn't even realize Twitter had a tablet mode cause that's not available on my Galaxy Fold. Techno has also done a lot of work with the software such that it doesn't feel like the regular iOS just slapped on a foldable. It is actually optimized to take advantage of this form factor. A swipe down from the center will automatically trigger split screen mode. Even when you swipe to home screen, the recent menu retains your app pair so you can return to your workflow easily. I like how it uses the whole screen to show your recent apps like a PC. I'm mentioning this because on Samsung Z Fold, you only see one app at a time in the recent menu. But here, I don't have to swipe so much to access my recent apps. That's much better for productivity. Now, using the smart panel, you can swipe and hold from the left or right to access more apps that you can either open in pop-up view while multitasking or drag and drop into split screen. It's almost unbelievable to see how much improvement Techno has done to the software. Even the animations are really smooth on the Phantom V Fold and you really feel that high refresh rate. It is high OS 13 Fold version, currently on Android 13 and still has a few more tricks up its sleeves like its voice assistant Ella, ability to disable control panel access from the lock screen and plenty more if you'd like to tweak around. Two finger tap and hold on a photo with text and it will extract the text for you. Also when using 5G, the phone has a smart feature where it switches to 4G to save battery and back to 5G when it detects you need that speed. Another thing worthy of mention here is that iOS has been cleaned up. There are much less bloatware apps. Actually for the first time on the Techno phone, I didn't need to uninstall any apps before use. No ads, no wanted notifications from pre-installed apps. The whole software experience actually got me asking, is this really techno? Not to praise it too much, the software is not actually perfect and here are a few things I have noticed. Now while most apps are optimized well and works just as fine as you expect on any Android tablet, TikTok doesn't get that kind of optimization on say a Samsung Fold where it pushes the comments to the side and doesn't interrupt the content you are viewing. But that's only on TikTok I've noticed this so far. Techno attempts to integrate material you hear and it's nice to see but it's not quite there yet. You can set the system to switch dynamic colors according to the wallpaper and there is icon theming but the icons don't automatically switch when I change the wallpaper. I have to retoggle the icon theming for it to take effect. It also randomly switches some of the icons to dark mode and doesn't switch them back. Now this particular glitch is not uncommon though, it happens with my Samsung devices too. Also, this is not an issue that actually affects user experience, it's just on a visual level. It is actually nice to see they are making efforts. Hopefully, they can perfect the integration with Material U. 
Based on the Phantom X2 series, we can assume the V-Fold would get 3 years of software support, but that's only an assumption and this was not officially stated. So we can only wait to see and it will help if Techno actually commits to it officially. I should however mention that my V-Fold is a review unit with a pre-release version of the software. The retail unit has a more up-to-date version of the software while mine is on the same bar security patch. I'm actually tempted to go flash the current firmware so I can get whatever updates they send. One more thing I thought was nifty is that when using the internal display, you can screen record in 2K quality. That's cool. Now with foldables, there will always be durability concerns, especially because of that flexible display. And the concerns might even be more when it involves a manufacturer's first attempt. The Phantom V Fold so far is a sturdy phone, it doesn't feel fragile and I doubt you would have any issues if handled with care. It has been tested to withstand at least 200,000 folds, the hinge is holding up fine so far. However, the most fragile part of a foldable is the external display. Techno has offered one year screen warranty with the device so if anything happens to the screen within the first 365 days of use, they will fix for free or replace the device. I actually do not doubt that because from experience, they provide one of the best care services in this region. The V-Fold boasts the largest battery currently on a foldable with its 5000mAh battery. Using it daily, I get between 6 to 8 hours of screen on time. The max I've gotten is about 7 hours and 30 minutes. That's solid battery life by any foldable standards. There are two versions of the Phantom V-Fold, 256 and 512 gig memory options, both with 12 gigs of RAM. It does not get an SD card slot, but it accepts dual nano SIM cards, both with 5G support. It works well with MTN 5G. In all of my ramblings, we've not even talked about the processor behind this device. It's a flagship Dimensity 9000 Plus, currently the best processor from MediaTek and it goes toe to toe with the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1. It powers this device like a champ and I have had no performance concerns even while putting this through heavy multitasking and gaming. Not even hitting issues. You'll be able to play your favorite games at the highest graphics settings expected of the flagship and have no disappointments. It handles Call of Duty Mobile or Apex Legends quite well. No lags, no hitting concerns. You can either play with the widescreen or use the external display whichever is most convenient. The haptic feedback here is also significantly improved over what we had on the Phantom X2 Pro. A lot better actually. If you watch my Phantom X2 Pro review, I had to turn off the haptics, but here, it is great. Cameras are not one of the strengths of foldables, even for the more popular brands. However, I'd say the Phantom V Fold measures up. It carries a similar camera configuration as their flagship Phantom X2 Pro, sporting a 50 megapixel main camera, 50 megapixel telephoto, and a 13 megapixel ultra wide for its rear cameras. We get two selfie cameras here, one on the external display and the other one on the internal display, 32 and 16 megapixels respectively. And depending on how you look at it, a third and more functional selfie camera in the form of the rear camera. From my hands-on review, the cameras really impressed me, but there were those that claimed it was abroad weather, if you know what I mean. Having it on hand now and I can say for a fact it's actually that good. It holds its own quite well, even in low light. You may have some inconsistencies in low light, but you still get great shots in fewer tries. Skin tones are great, HDR processing is also on point. I also found this video performance in low light to be quite impressive. Tricky lighting here, but the V-Fold holds up well, shooting at 4K 30fps. I noticed there's no optical image stabilization on this main camera, but you are able to use the ultra steady mode with 4K 30fps, so that's still quite stable. Now, what will impress you the most in these cameras is using the rear one for selfies. That's one of the perks of foldables like this, allowing you use the phone's best camera system for selfies. And it doesn't just give you a preview but grants you full access to the rear cameras with all of its controls, allowing you record selfie videos at 4K60, taking high quality selfies which you'll find to be very detailed and impressive. I doubt you'll actually want to use the normal selfie camera when you can use the rear for selfies and get the best quality. Okay, hello. So this is a selfie video from Technopans from b precisely using the rear camera and the external display. Currently shooting at 4K 30 frames per second. One of the benefits of this is being able to use the external display as a preview for the rear camera. But this actually gives you the entire camera functionality. So what you can do when you are using the rear camera normally, you can do it using the rear camera as a selfie camera with the external display. Hope that's not confusing. Yeah, so shooting at 4K 30 frames per second and currently using the rear camera as 50 megapixels. What do you think about its quality and then its uh, microphone quality as well? 
Techno's Phantom V4 might not be the best all-round foldable in the market right now, but it's surely the best value for money when you consider what it offers for almost half the price of the competition. The only thing I missed from my Galaxy Fold since I started using this is the S Pen integration, but since I always have my S23 Ultra with me, I can live without it because it wasn't really inbuilt anyway. It provides a more useful external display, gives me the multitasking and tablet functionality I demand of a foldable. I can highly recommend this to someone who is keen to try out a foldable but doesn't want to spend all that much money. Yes, there will always be those that say instead of spending this amount on a techno phone, they'd rather buy an S series Samsung or an iPhone. But here's what I think. Someone that wants a tablet experience in form of a foldable is not really looking for a regular size phone and will only be satisfied by a foldable. Now what I would recommend if you are skeptical about it is that you walk into any of the stores where it's on display and experience it for a few minutes. Then you get to decide if it's worth trying or you can splurge the cash on the more expensive options. Depending on the market reception to this, Techno might have successfully filled a void in the market for affordable, foldable phones. And it's only a matter of time before Samsung and other manufacturers consider making the foldables more affordable. Or maybe we'll even start seeing mid-range foldable phones. For a first attempt, I'd say Techno has done great. Definitely, they now need to assure software of this and live up to it and keep improving the software because it still needs some work. This is probably the longest video I've ever done. If you've made it this far, you are the real MVP. Peace.